Um, as, uh, as Alan mentioned, I'm from Elka, I'm the sales marketing manager, uh, and we'll get into Claro and what's brand new in version 12. There's an awful lot that we've packed into it. Uh, it for us, uh, as Elkal, it's quite a, a standout uh, release in terms of what we've been up to recently. Um, I'm assuming everybody can see my screen. Uh, a great picture of a muscle car on the screen uh, and broken up with some data on the uh, right-hand side and some cutout. And we'll get into all of this in, in a moment. Uh, a brief uh, overview of both Alan and myself, uh, for those of you who haven't met us or, or one of us at least. Um, this is us. Uh, Alan is based out of the UK. I'm based out of the Netherlands, uh, albeit um, I have uh, quite a lot of British background to the whole process. So before we get into the new version uh, and what's, uh, what's new, uh, I want to talk a little bit about the history of Elpical uh, for those that don't uh, know too much about us. Founded in 97, uh, there's a management buyout from uh, Victor Hasselblad's electronic imaging department for their digital cameras. Uh, and that group became Elpical and has been ever since. Uh, so we have some great legacy uh, in terms of where we've come from and the real deep understanding of images uh, and just what goes into that whole process of creating electronic images. Since then, we've done an awful lot uh, in terms of development. Uh, we are now a leading specialist in the image uh, enhancement field. Uh, and we factor into both uh, newspapers, publish, magazine publishers, and an awful lot more in terms of where we reach into with our software and application. Uh, our current users, everything, as I was saying, newspapers through magazines, advertising agencies, photo studios, even trading card uh, manufacturers, uh, supermarkets, etc., will use Claro for basically the same idea, but very, very many kind of unique workflows in, in that. As you can see from the map, uh, we're now in 59 countries. Uh, I'm waiting for country number 60 to come through, hopefully in the next couple of months, once we kind of uh, get a little bit more calmed down. But really it's been across the globe. Uh, it's not in specific markets, albeit Northern uh, North America, Northern Europe, uh, and sort of Asia are key markets for us. We're expanding into South America uh, and African countries too. So it's really interesting to see the range of kind of uses of of Clara for this. Okay, enough of the background and uh, let's dive into what's new with Clara. Uh, Clara itself is an image application, uh, image enhancement application, uh, automated as much as possible um, for really taking a lot of the work off of the Photoshop department teams uh, in terms of what it does or what they do for images. Now with version 12, we've really kind of stepped up in terms of what we're offering now for the application. Uh, we really see three key focal points with this application now. We've done an awful lot of work uh, on top of the current enhancement process that we have uh, for images. Uh, so now we're delivering a huge number of new features within Claro itself uh, on top of the already fairly substantial amount of toning uh, uh, algorithms and processes that we had in place. On top of that, we now look at Vision 2. Vision is Google's AI engine for image understanding, and we'll utilize that for bringing a lot more business intelligence into the, both the toning process, but also looking at the scope of what image optimization, uh, as we now see Claro as, uh, into the much wider kind of approach uh, for brands, for larger uh, um, uh, multinational corporates, just really what those images are used for and also ways of tracking it. And then finally, we also, I say finally, it's its kind of all three of these are, are equally balanced, really. Uh, we now have an automated tool for removing the backgrounds from images also. Uh, so as we see the footballers here, we've got uh, celebrities, pack shots, product shots, all that type of approach. We can now remove the backgrounds uh, automatically within the workflow of Claro itself. So what we'll do, we'll take a look at what's new in the vision uh, side of things. Um, in terms of this. So uh, intelligent toning, this is really kind of an interesting part for us. Uh, we're using the data that comes back now from uh, from vision. So looking at the keywords, uh, if we know it has skin in it, and we'll see some examples shortly. If it has skin in it, we know there's going to be flesh. We can work on specific skin toning uh, details at this point in time. Dynamic cropping, again, using the data, uh, vision will recognize uh, faces and put a box around that, albeit in the background. We use that data to then uh, dynamically crop to the face. So celebrity shots, sports shots, anything with the people in it, we can now produce a range of different aspect ratios of the crops automatically. 
So the same with the skin tone correction. This is a, a real nice feature. Um, you have maybe like social social light shots where the flash is kicked off. It's highlighted and blown out the highlight or blown out uh, foreheads and uh, cheekbones, etc. Clara can now recognize this and add skin tone back into those blown out areas. So it puts a dot back onto the image and retains a lot more data. So overall, the image result is much, much nicer. And now the real fun part of this, and this is kind of what drives most of it, uh, the auto keywording. So not only do we have that metadata for driving Claro, but we can also have that metadata appended to the file itself. So it is uh, in or put into the IPTC keywords uh, metadata field, but also we can use it for appending to the file name itself. So all of a sudden you go from image 001 to image 001 Ferrari 348 GTO red, et cetera, et cetera, depending on what the, the content of the image is. And we'll see a bit more of that uh, shortly. The remove side of things, this is really kind of uh, exciting for us, the holy grail as it were in, in terms of what we're looking for, uh, what Photoshop departments are looking for. To be able to uh, remove accurately uh, the background information. This is a great example, uh, completely automated. Uh, I haven't touched this at all with Photoshop. Uh, this was just straight in, straight back out again from the system. So very, very powerful. Now, it's gonna do a huge percentage of those images automatically, that's great. There are gonna be some that are very, very intricate, the tennis rackets or the motorcycles, cyclists, that sort of thing where you have the spokes and the strings. That might still need a little bit more work, but we can automatically push that over within the Claro workflow to the Photoshop teams. They can carry out their finessing of the image and send it back into the workflow, all controlled and managed by Claro at the time. And finally, enhance. Again, I, I say finally, it's not really finally because they're, they're all pretty much important uh, across the board. Um, huge amount of new features within this, uh, new toning functions, extended toning functions, and then some operational functionality too, uh, more sort of under the hood type, uh, type approach with this. Um, but we have uh, within the new tone functions, brand colors of detection identification, selective color correction, which is something that's used within Photoshop. Very specific uses, but very, very powerful at the same time. Uh, done a huge amount of work on the mid-tone controls. Uh, before in Clara, we only had shadows and highlights. We can now separately control those tonal regions uh, for contrast. So you can really bring out the full depth of the image automatically. Uh, a new color balance engine also included within this. Just more for car images with cast, we see one of the things we've seen with Claro and the use of images, especially in the last sort of 24, 36 months, the huge push now to re, uh, reuse images from Instagram, from Twitter, the, the social media type images. Everything's being shot on a cell phone or mobile phone these days. So what are some of those uh, uh, idiosyncrasies that come from that type of format? How can we as a, an organization make those images better? So there's been a lot of kind of focus really on grain in an image, noise in an image, especially as I say from the cell phones. And just trying to work as much as possible from those uh, those poorer images, shall we say, uh, in terms of the actual uh, quality uh, of the uh, and the way they are put together. How do we make those better? Uh, minimum edge dot creation again, not for everybody, but it puts a introduces a hard edge around the outside of the image. And again, we'll, we'll see some examples from that. Okay, the first one. This is my favourite one of all uh, in terms of just showing some of the in depth kind of approach that we have with this. A uh, couple of cans of Coke. Um, on the left, the original, uh, and then a corrected one on the right. This is using the brand color uh, uh, correction and detection. So within the application itself, you can key in the values of the brand color you want to achieve, and then it takes the originals uh, and then identifies those particular colors and then just shifts them across to within the brand color specification. Now there is a tolerance, so you can make it very, very strict or very I would say very loose, but looser uh, than standard. So you capture a lot more colors and shift that across. But this has done a really nice job. The, the can on the left is much more orange in real life uh, than the one on the right. These are two cans. I bought one in Belgium and one in the Netherlands uh, just recently and then saw the difference and it, it's quite incredible. So these are actually cans of Coke that I have uh, and they, they haven't been doctored in any way at all. Now, uh, selective color correction, uh, again, will be used for specific uh, cases, but this is a great example of how we can manipulate just specific colors within the color channels themselves. So I'm gonna go from this one, 
to this. So I've pulled out a lot of the green and, and uh, from this image. So it's a real shows a real nice simple case. The rest of the image isn't touched, but just the car itself is uh, is moved. So again, specific use cases for it, but very very powerful uh, for those particular cases. Minimum edge dot. Uh, this is just a nice feature to have. Uh, it can, comes from a, a couple of customer recommend or, or uh, suggestions and requests actually, um, where they, the art directors don't want the image to bleed off of on the page. It's very much more oriented for a uh, print operation, but again, there is use in the digital side of things too. Uh, so you can see on the right hand side, the image has nice uh, squared off edges. The one on the left just bleeds off. And that leads to an interesting point too. We see now more and more teams are, are using Clara for both print and digital. So there's been a lot of focus too on this new development in terms of what can we do for the digital side of things? How do we help that uh, the online presence and the online uh, stories be, become much more readable, become more important, just get better responses from them, those images too. And the digital teams are seeing this. It, it started off being very much kind of, well, we don't need to change these images. They then see some of the other uh, competition users using Claro for the images uh, and they become much clearer, much more uh, poppy on screen for lack of a better description. And that started to, to look at the change. And from that, questions have arisen in terms of what can we do for metrics for these images? How can we make these uh, appear better in search engine uh, rankings and so forth? So there's been a lot of work done on SEO, uh, more for the or for image SEO, but also with the idea of the larger picture as to what we can uh, do with the uh, with the images for the digital teams themselves. Now this is a great image. This this basically just kind of captures everything in in a single image as to where we've come from uh, with Clara in from version 11 to version 12. Original on the left. What we're doing with version 11 in the middle is a pretty good result, really. To be honest, it was it was quite stunning at the time in terms of opening up shadows. We remove some of the cast from the snow, make it much more bright and vibrant. Then we go to version 12. So now you can see some of the additional contrast that's been put in place in the highlight areas. There's been a lot of work done on that. And it just makes the image stand out a million miles compared to version 11. And it's night and day different to, to the original. So we really like this image. It really kind of captures a lot of what we've done with Claro for version 12. So that's kind of it for the enhanced side of things. There is a a lot of other stuff that goes on under the hood that we've done uh, in terms of some of the, the, the features and, and functionality. And that will become apparent when you use it in, in small kind of uh, just interesting kind of changes to, to some of the images. But that's kind of some of the more dynamic uh, results that we have. Now for the vision side of things, uh, this is really where it gets, gets a lot of fun for us in terms of how we develop the software, how we go or where we go out uh, with the product. So as we saw earlier, there's a number of different uh, options that we can now work with this intelligent turning, dynamic cropping and so forth. And we'll take a look at some of that. The way that Google works or vision, uh, as we call it, works, uh, it breaks out the image, it understands what the image is and then appends different text and different uh, keywords to this. It also uses boxes uh, to identify certain key elements within the page or within the image itself. So it will also pick up an eyes, mouth, objects, logos, etc., and be able to identify that. But this is a great way of explaining what we can do with Clara. So with this image, uh, we have the lady, she's uh, in the desert, for example, or, or somewhere it's a model shot anyway. But because the metadata reports back, there's a face, there's skin, and there's a woman in the picture, Clara understands that and then knows from that basis that there is, in fact, there is uh, going to be a skin tone correction needed for this image. And it runs through the skin tones. It knows where the skin tone base is coming from with the face box. But more importantly, it knows that there's skin on this. Okay, great. However, if we have an image of, say, the sea or a fish or something like that, there is no skin tone obviously flagged up. So we don't do any skin tone correction to that image. Now, that makes sense. But the big thing with this is that then you're then starting to save on uh, processing algorithms and processing time. So you start to get much more appropriately toned images than ever before and in less time. So on a case by case basis, you're not going to see a huge difference. But over the course of a week or a month in terms of image throughput, you're going to see quite a huge reduction in terms of uh, processing time itself and better looking images from the, uh, the end result. Now, with that face box uh, for the dynamic cropping, this was all set up within channels within Claro. Uh, we obviously know where the face is. We can then crop the image to that to 
our own aspect ratios. So these are five aspect ratios I've just put together, 60 by nine, one by one, three by four, et cetera. And I've also created a few different, uh, different thumbnails to different resolutions. Obviously, again, looking at the website side of things, these images don't need to be great quality. You can sacrifice quality for size at this point in time for the thumbnails. So we have, excuse me, tiny thumbnails, uh, at much lower resolution, but much better resolution for the different aspect ratios. And again, I'm not gonna use all of these, but it gives me as the operator a chance to choose the best looking image uh, in terms of uh, crop and uh, size for my application, uh, whether it be online, whether it be a story, impressed, et cetera, et cetera. Now, one step further, using the improved skin tone correction, as I was saying earlier, when we have uh, flashes being fired off, uh, or there's just generally uh, bright sunlight uh, outside. Now, this gentleman uh, has a, a very nice kind of uh, blown out area of uh, forehead. Now, using the crop box, uh, sorry, the face detection box on this, uh, Clara knows it's a face, we'll then look for highlight spots, uh, anything at zero uh, dot, and we'll then fill in very slightly with appropriate skin tone color now side by side you don't really see this uh, too well but it certainly fills in so you're going to get a much nicer image uh, all around now the fun part of uh, vision we have that metadata already we, we have that all recorded but this is what we can start to do with some of these uh, this, these fields the image itself as you can see the ferrari on the uh, the left has a few boxes around it so vision picks up that it's got tires wheels it's a, a 348 uh, etc etc it's red now it goes from that to having the uh, the keywords added to the metadata itself and it also appends the file that metadata to the file name now this is really important when you're looking at image seo and search engine rankings um, if you have the ferrari 348 tagged into that file name when somebody searches for a ferrari 348 there's a much higher chance that your image is going to be offered up as part of that search result than it would be if it was just called dsc underscore 0188 etc so there's a lot of scientific or a lot of science behind this uh, that the marketing teams use for improving their search engine rankings uh, and overall SEO. So perhaps not traditionally where we sit, but we're getting much more into this now in terms of the science behind the online uh, criteria. Now, remove the, uh, this bit is, doesn't really need much explanation in terms of what it does. Uh, basically, the file is uh, sent through Clara uh, to an online engine uh, through an API call. It's processed and delivered back within seconds. Uh, this thing is incredibly fast, which is great. Now, a couple of different workflows, uh, and one of the key things that uh, Clara can offer um, is that, first off, uh, fully automatic, so the image goes up, is processed, and is back out to an output folder, or we introduce a stop and use the Claro Inspector tool, which is a plugin for Photoshop, um, which enables the operator to manually check that the image is correct, and if so required, add a little bit more uh, finesse to that image. So they can very quickly uh, add uh, some data back into the image or take it out. So um, we'll see an example in a moment, just where we can work with that directly on within Photoshop, albeit within uh, the Claro environment. So some great examples of what we can do with uh, with uh, the, the application coming up. This one is, is a perfect example, really. Uh, a couple of footballers, you have all the noise, all the various colors in the background, um, the grass is, as well as the, uh, at the bottom. That's all automatically removed. I haven't touched this at all with Photoshop. It was just straight up and straight back in. So uh, a phenomenal result. I mean, just incredible in terms of the, the difference of colors in the background, albeit it works on foreground background, but it's still done a remarkable job in terms of what it's achieved. It's also great for cars if you're looking at uh, second-hand car sales or you have a used car um, application, whether it be, but you need to do a comp shot of those cars. Very, very quick, very, very uh, uh, accurate too. It also knows it's a car and will introduce a shadow underneath it too. Uh, so perfect for them placing elsewhere on, on other uh, applications. Uh, this one's quite a nice, uh, a nice shot to uh, explore. Lots of greens going on. So again, it's been able to detect the background and foreground. There's one bit that it has it has missed, and it's a great example of just how you could then come back in and, and change it within Photoshop. It's just this part here in the ladies uh, between the bangle uh, and the the cardigan itself. Uh, it still retained the original information from here, but no problem at all. I can take the open that in Photoshop uh, with this as my layered TIFF or layered PSD file very very quickly edit it i mean even i don't do photoshop uh, i'm not a photoshop operator by any means but it's a very simple 
five second job to remove that and it's done and it's back in so okay we still have to do a little bit of uh, finessing of the image but other than that having to cut this out manually would take 10 minutes 15 minutes at least so you save an awful lot of time just on that basis Finally, we have the, uh, the the usual kind of suspects, as it were, for, for pack shots and product shots. Uh, these are taken from Vinted.nl, uh, uh, which is Vinted itself, if you don't know, is a secondhand clothes uh, online uh, sales site. Uh, huge across Northern Europe uh, in terms of usage, uh, but it has all these kind of typical shots. And they're all shot by users, home users, so done on cell phones, etc. So not great quality. So we can add two things to this uh, process. And one is that it is uh, we can improve the uh, the image itself, but also we can do the cutouts automatically for that. And I think that's that's one of the things to take from that. We can look at these three separate parts very separately, uh, individual parts. So you have remove, you have vision, you have the enhancement on their own, very, very powerful. But when you combine them, you start to get a lot more intelligence put into that image and a lot more use out of that image. So you can quite easily structure a workflow that goes uh, up to Google first. We get all that metadata. Based on that metadata, uh, as we saw earlier from the faces and everything, we can then start to make intelligent decisions as to how we tone these images. It has skin tone, therefore we apply some softening to the skin tone itself, some enhancement to the saturation, etc. cetera. Uh, we can then crop it. We could then do a cutout and so forth all automatically so overall really where we go with Claro with this uh, it, as I say there's those three points very very nice uh, three different engines very nice to have but combined makes for a really powerful tool for both print and also digital too and I think that's where we currently see everything going uh, more and more digital in fact it, it seems to have uh, sped up through the crisis at the moment that uh, more and more uh, um, emphasis is being put on the digital processes so we still have a high requirement for good quality uh, albeit in a very different environment and that's something that Clara handles very very easily and very quickly okay just before we get into the q and I just want to show some examples from uh, the um, vision side of things. Uh, vision, this has a, an open API that you can uh, go to and just test out. Um, logos, as I was saying earlier, and going back to the brands, uh, you can start to structure workflows based on these. Uh, so if we know that there is a uh, Pepsi logo in it or a Coca-Cola logo in this itself, in the, the image, we have that captured in the metadata and we can start to act upon that too. So same with this one where we have Google will, or Vision will recognize certain landmarks. So if it has landmark detection, now we don't do anything with that at this moment in time, uh, but going forward, if there's a requirement, we already have that data. So we can start to structure this all into part of that workflow itself. So very, very cool in terms of where we are at the moment, but where we're gonna go is is really interesting to, to kind of uh, guess where we go. Uh, and this is our lady from earlier, so we can see that it recognizes a person and outerwear. And then this is the face box, uh, uh, for the lady in the desert so you can tell that there's uh, where the box is for the face detection and there's other points that uh, we also see from this now just before we wrap this up going through this uh, you can see that okay we have faces we also have boxes uh, sorry objects we have labels the labels are where we generate the metadata from um, so lots of information from that and there's other parts to webs uh, sorry web information where these images are actually located so there's a lot we can do with that data as i say right now we use the data purely for doing the toning and adding in extra information where, where we will go with it is start to act upon some of these other reports too uh, but that part is really is really down to each each and every user uh, so we're looking forward to seeing what some of the uh, the users will come back with uh, for this Okay, so that's really the new features in, in a nutshell, very, very quickly uh, run through. Um, any any questions? I, I see we have a couple of uh, messages that I probably missed. Yes, there's a question um, about using vision and add the client's corporate colors to the vision account. So that's used in some of the methodology of um, the intelligence that's come through. So Can where I you've got the, to... the brand recognizing for Coke, for example, um, yeah, can right. associate that with the brand color attribute as well. Uh, that's that's a really quick, good question. Uh, within Vision itself, I don't believe you can. Uh, I've looked into Vision in quite some depth, more for the, the use of it. I don't know if you can add that to Vision, um, but that's a great question. Um, certainly what you 
could do uh, with that is if the brand, if it comes back that it is your brand, uh, we could build that into one of the Claro channels itself. So we, you have specific brand colors within Claro. Uh, very simple to do. Uh, I can show you that part if that's appropriate, or we can we can take that offline and discuss it further. I don't mind either, either way. I think it'd be useful to show the, the channel configuration, Derek. Um, but as you say, sure. based on the feedback of vision, it detects the brand and that helps the routing of that file through the particular channels. Absolutely. So uh, let me go into my brand colors. Now I have a lot of channels set up here. I, I do quite a lot of other work outside of uh, with the marketing side of things. But coming into this, so we have brand colors. Uh, this is the Claro interface. Uh, very easy to use if you haven't seen it before. Uh, we've tried to make it as simple as possible to get images through process. And now you don't need to be a color scientist or uh, photography expert to, to make this work. Now we have two main options, image enhancement and colors. In colors itself, we have something called brand colors, surprise, surprise. Uh, here's a couple I've already have set up but you can come in here and add in your RGB value for the brand color. And within that, there's a lot of other data in the background or, or, or uh, use in the background that we can then apply. So if we know it is, now, for example, these two uh, top colors were McDonald's uh, yellow and blue from their cups. Um, so I could call this particular channel McDonald's uh, brand colors, for example, and then tie that into the metadata that comes back from Vision to say, okay, so for example, this one, McDonald's cups or McDonald's as general, uh, we can then route through this particular uh, workflow itself within Clara. So it is really interesting to see what we can do. Now, uh, this is very, very early stages in terms of how we, we, we've driven Clara V12 really from one aspect, a number of aspects, but we're starting to see with the requests coming in and usage or users questions coming back, this being a prime example, if you have a set brand color, how can you then use that intelligence to then drive things further? So we already have some ideas coming out in the next, I think, two months to work with us a little bit further, but it's a prime example in terms of, okay, there's an awful lot of data that we, we're working with at the moment. How do we then kind of streamline this to make it work as best as possible for you as the end user? So yes, the, this is kind of a rudimentary way of working at the moment, but give, give us a few months and we're going to have some much smarter workflows coming through too. So it's it's very, for us, it, it's vision is, is kind of version 1.0 in terms of how we use that with Claro. When we get to version 1.1 1, 1 and 1.5, I, I can't wait to see what we do with it because it's going to be some really cool workflow stuff. Okay, and another question that came through, uh, using the inspector uh, associated with Photoshop, does that allow you to work in a hybrid environment where you could do the heavy lifting on a Windows platform, for example, but still use the Mac Studio um, department where you can cross that um, the divide where Macs and Windows never normally work together? <laughs> Yes, absolutely. So um, with that, with uh, with Inspector, uh, the idea is that um, the Inspector tool itself, you can have as many different uh, uh, licenses uh, um, with that. Uh, is basically a site license. So if you have it on PC, you can have Claro server running on a Linux box. You could have PCs out there. You could have Macs out there too. So yeah, that part really doesn't make any difference. It's completely agnostic in terms of how it works uh, throughout the um, the the organization or the, the the setup that you have this is inspector here uh this is just offered up uh all these different images that i've, I've already kind of run in the background as you can see um, but it allows me to then open these up into photoshop and then if i have my photoshop tool up sorry bear with me just one sec there we go so this is one again had one running through earlier so this is all within uh underneath the claro umbrella um, so what I would do for these more intricate type images, shall we say, or, or critical images um, that you want somebody to have eyeballs on, uh, run it through the inspector tool uh, or the inspector workflow that gets offered up here. Now me as the operator, I can come in, I can double click on this image. It opens up into Photoshop. I can make all my changes. As you can see from here, this is the one where we have the, uh, the background uh, removal. Uh, option already in place. So you can see the tire here needs a little bit of extra work. So I could come in, uh, pick up my brush tool and just add in uh, a little bit more here. It's going to be pretty, pretty basic what I do. Just add in, there we go. Something like that, very quick. 
then I click save and now this is all, all those changes that have happened within Claro and then my manual changes within Photoshop are saved and then sound, sent as the final output to the output folder. Now that again can be anywhere across the network, but it just it enables all the heavy lifting, say 80%, 90%, 70% of the work to be done automatically and then allows the Photoshop uh, team to really kind of hone their skills, their, their creative side, uh, rather than doing the mundane, boring stuff, it really enables them to, to harness their, their skill set uh, within Photoshop for being more creative. Uh, so yes, absolutely, it makes no difference what platform everybody's running on, it just offers the, offers the image up, it, it's entirely up to you. Okay, I think that concludes the questions, unless there's any last minute ones that can come through. So really appreciate everyone's time for joining today. Derek, thank you for an excellent presentation. Um, I think everyone will agree that version 12 is a massive step change from what was before. The new features functionality that's come in um, as extra value as well in the services that our clients can now offer uh, to their end users as well. Um, speed, the efficiencies are all wins for everyone as well. So if you've got further questions, feel free to reach out to us, just um, sales at workflows.com. Um, we'll happily answer those questions for you. And if you need any test images, then um, by all means, we'll happily run through those as well with you. So thank you for joining. Thank you, Derek. All right, thanks everyone. And uh, yeah, I hope everybody has a good day and good evening.